I've got one that can see. Logic before authority. Hi guys, this is Daniel Alexander Cannon here on Logic Before Authority once again. In a quick review so that if anyone hasn't seen the previous videos, what we are doing is we are looking into the legend of giants of old and uh, also giants of today which do exist. Just because you have never seen nothing personally with your own eyes does not mean that it does not exist. How many fish in the sea do you not know about? How many creatures in the sea or in the desert do you not know about? And how many types of part human beings live in this world? W-H-R-L-E-D world that you don't know about or that I don't know about. Well, I have learned that there are some, and I've learned this through personal experience, that they do still exist in our woods and trees today, but they are not just like us and just bigger. And they are not like just apes and bigger. They are real. So what we're doing is we've been trying to, from a biblical standpoint, go and find where, where this might have came from potentially at least find out the beginning and the end of what we can determine through biblical scripture and look for signs and symbols and things that uh, may take us even further from there <coughs> excuse me so what we did previously was we looked into and read stories like about Esau he was uh, he was born to Rebecca and to Isaac, uh, that uh, that entreated the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebecca, his wife, conceived. So Rebecca conceived. What we want to do is we're going to follow Rebecca back and see what we can see about her lineage going back and where, see what we can see about how, well, if this altered state that created Esau, because it, when Rebecca had children, one came out, well, it says, and the first came out red all over like an hairy garment. And they called him Esau, his name Esau. So he was hairy all over. And he was a cunning hunter, a man of the field. And Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. And yeah, so he lived in the mountains and he liked to uh, eat venison, catch deers and eat venison. And we also know that there came a time when Jacob, Jacob of Israel, where Israel gets his name from, deceived Esau, who was born first, in order to trick him out of his birthright from his father. We're also going to look at his father, uh, hopefully in this video, and follow him back as well, backwards to start with. We're going to go backwards and find the beginning of this bloodline and this story. And then we're going to go forward, likely, after that. So when Esau was deceived by his mother, Rebekah, and his brother, Jacob, they had to cover him in hair that was of a sheep, okay? Or excuse me, a, a goat. Yeah, goat hair. Because his dad knew his son was hairy, so they covered his shoulders and his arms in hair. His dad was old, Isaac was old, and so he... Could not see obviously very well based on the way it's written and so when he asked for his son to come to him he asked his birthright son Esau to go get him a a uh, a deer venison and cook it and bring it back to him but Rebecca had Jacob go do that to deceive her husband and to trick him into believing Jacob uh, 
was Esau so that he could get the birthright blessings, whatever that meant at that time. It was a very powerful thing, apparently. So we're going to continue here. We're going to look, let's look at Rebecca and uh, follow her back, okay, and see where, see what we find. So hang on here just a second. Okay, so let's go ahead and run a search for, and we're doing this together, uh, Rebecca. A lot of times when I'm searching in the Bible, I will shorten the words up just to see what comes up under R-E-B-E, -E, for instance. And it's interesting to see what words are related to someone's name because in those days, people were named because of their traits, what they looked like, how they behaved, things like that. It's not necessarily always the case, but it very much was the case in those days. So Rebecca, and you see rebelled, and then we start seeing Rebecca, of course, okay? And we see, right here's one of the things we're looking for. And Bethel begot Rebecca, okay? These eight Milchai did bear Nahor, Abraham's brother. So we're going to go, we're going to ultimately click on this in a second and go back and look at that. Okay. But we're also looking down further. And, uh, and here's another mention of Rebecca came out who was born to Bethel, son of Milchai. Milchai, however you pronounce it. And uh, let's go down a little further. Rebecca had a brother, and his name was Laban. And Laban ran out unto the man, unto the well. Let's just keep on going down. I'm just seeing whether the uses mainly R-E-B-E -E, has been used as. And so we're seeing Rebecca, Rebecca, Rebecca over and over. And one reason I'm looking at this is because I think at some point, in the Bible, her name changed. The spelling of it changed. And this happened several times. And so they changed the name of the woman for some reason. So we want to know why that changed. And what did that mean? That What did it, did it mean by her name changing? What did it have to do with? What changed about her? Okay. Is the question. So we're getting, let's see, Rebecca at the top is K-A-H. We're seeing K-A-H. Let's keep going down, see what else we see. It's just the way you have to do research. K-A-H, uh, yep, yep. K-A-H, and yep. Okay, and there's tons of interesting things to read here, obviously, but we got to stick to our task here. We got another rebel here, rebel. Uh huh. And rebelled. And rebellious. And that happens to be also part of Rebecca's name. So it is an indication, likely, of her. Um, her personality, you might say. Uh, well, for one, she was the one who deceived, come up with the idea to deceive Isaac and to deceive her son Esau. So she was definitely rebellious to her own son and to her own husband. So we're just seeing more rebels and things like that. Uh, rebelled, rebelled, rebelled. It'll get more interesting in a minute, guys. So don't run off yet. Rebellious. Rebellion. Okay. Rebel, rebel, rebel. I think we'll run into that name change soon enough. If in fact it is here, like I've heard it is. Uh, we'll see. So let's go on back to the top. And uh, if I can get that to show up, sure I can go to, go to the top. There we go. Okay, so now we go over, and we we can see right here that it says, Bethel begot Rebekah, and that is uh, Genesis twenty two twenty three, 
And then in verse or uh, chapter 24, it then talks about Rebekah's birth again. And it said, and it came to pass before he had done speaking that, before speaking something specific that, behold, Rebekah came out who was born to Bethel, son of Melchi, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother. Okay. With a pitcher, with her pitcher upon her shoulder, pitcher of water apparently. This is her her coming out, not as birth actually, but it just reminds you here that she was born to Bethel. She was just showing up with a pitcher on her shoulder to get some water from a, a, a well. So let's go ahead and go to Genesis 22-23. Okay. 22-23 right here. We'll highlight that. And we know now that Rebecca was Bethel, or uh, Bethel's uh, daughter, right? Yes. So now what we need to do is probably run a search on Bethel. Beth, U-E-L. Beth. Let's just leave it at Beth to start with, like we did a while ago. So now we've got Beth E L, the name of a location. Okay. And we should see Beth L, Beth U L here as well, which we do. And Chase it and Hazo and Fieldash and uh Jed did laugh, something like that, and Bethuel, okay, and that was Genesis 22, 22, and 22, 23, it says again where Bethel begot Rebekah, right here is where it's saying who had, who, who, whose mother was um, Bethel, so let's take a look at that, where she came from, okay. We could all, we'll do that in a second. Let's just glance down here. Let's see what else we see real quickly. Although there's 261 verses that have the word Beth in it. Like Elizabeth. Beth. Each of the syllables, like Eliz, a Beth, those are all indications of either location or behavioral attributes I believe okay Bethlehem of course uh, Beth Haran Beth Nibra those are cities but they have the word Beth in them that starts it out Beth Jezimoth Beth Peor and we could go on and on, obviously, because there's 261 mentions. But let's do Beth. Let's go ahead and go to Beth UL. Let's narrow the search down. Only 10 verses with that spelling. And there we go. And. Yeah. So it's, these are tied into some of our previous reading. But let's go up here and see the first mention of this name. And we've got it right here, Genesis 22, 22, which is the verse right before the previous one that we highlighted. Let's go up just a little bit and let's read here. And it came to pass after these things that it was told Abraham, saying, Behold, Milcah, she hath also born children unto thy brother. Uh, Nahor Huz was Huz his firstborn and Buzz his brother and Kimuel the UL again and uh, again the word L is a is a reference uh, 
as well. Typically in the Bible, it's reference to a deity or considered to be a deity or God or, or a Lord. And uh, it says, Kimuel, uh, the father of a ram. A ram, where you reckon a ram means? A ram typically, it sounds someone who would be very like a warrior. And we'll chase that another moment. And it says, then it goes on. It says, Huz was the first, Buzz was the second, Kimo, the father of Aram. And, <coughs> Chess, <coughs> excuse me, Chessid, <coughs> let me get a drink of water. One second. Okay. So, let's make sure we're reading this correctly. Because it's, a, it's not written real plain here. So it was talking about. Abraham here. And then it says behold. Mikhail. Or Mikhail. She hath also borne children unto thy brother. So. This female here. Has borne children to Abraham's brother. And uh, I'm not positive, to be honest with you, because I haven't made sure of this, but is Milka uh, Abraham's wife, one of his wives? Who, who is she? We'll figure that out. But for now, we are going to keep going uh, a little bit. But we need to know, are we saying these sons and names here are of Abraham, or are we saying they are of uh, Milka and Nahor it says Huz his and there's a there's a way we should be able to figure that out and I'll show you in a second uh, when we look at the individual's name we can run a search for it and we will it will clarify for instance okay uh, well actually we won't run a search what we'll do is we'll just look at the Strong's definition so let's look at that for Nabhor, okay, for instance. Where'd it go? Must be at the bottom, I'm sorry. Okay, there we go. So Nabhor, let's look at that. Where's that? Right there. H5152. Na Kohor, Na Kohor, Nabhor, Na Kohor. Okay, uh, says a snorer. Na Kohor, the name of the grandfather and a brother of Abraham. The name of the grandfather and a brother of Abraham. Okay, simply makes sense, right? And then if we go to just below that. says Huz, his firstborn and Buzz, his brother, and Kimel, and I know it's not pronounced exactly those ways, but bear with me. Uh, the father of Aram. Okay. Obviously, it's saying that these are the sons of Nahor, because it says Huz was his firstborn, Buzz was his brother, and Kimel, the father of Aram. So this was a son as well, and he was the father of Aram. And Chesed and Hazo and Phildash and Jalot and Bethel. So now let's click on Bethuel and see what we got. And it says pronunciation Beth O L O L Beth O L Beth O L instead of U L it's O L. Okay, apparently the same as, we'll look at these root definition words here, and but it means, check this out, destroyed by God, Beth Uel, the name of a nephew of Abraham, and of a place in Palestine, Beth Uel, meaning destroyed by God. Okay, so let's click on that so we can see these base uh, words here 
So let's look at the first one. It says apparently from the same as, and that same as is Bothal. Ball, like ball, ball, B A W, starting to sound like ball or bale. Probably an orthographical variation for, and it gives you another one, but it says desolation or waste. I'll go ahead and click the base base word or the root word. Feminine from an unused unused root meaning to break in pieces. Desolation, desolate. Destroyed by God, right? That's what it said up front up here. Now let's check the next base word from the top. That's H410. Uh, it says uh, shortened from... And it means strength as objective, mighty, especially the almighty. This is the word L. It's this is the the word I was telling you that was part of the word. And L. So this is defining L E L or A L E pronunciation. L. Uh, especially the Almighty, but used also of any deity. God, God, idiom, goodly, idiom, uh, great, idol, mighty, one, power, strong. So this is, uh, so far this is saying this is destroyed by God, but also is part of the word itself is a word for a deity, okay? All right, so let's we'll go ahead and peek at the base word for L, and I think I can see where it's going to take us, but we'll look at it. Uh, or the root word. <coughs> it says uh, same as gives you another another word root word, but properly strength, hence anything strong, specifically a chief, also a ram, meaning having to do with his strength, because like I said, a ram is named for what he does. And what does a ram do? A ram rams into things. He destroys things, or potentially anyways, he's very strong. A pillister as a strong support, like a pillar. This is saying it's something strong, to holding up something. It says an oak or other strong tree, or maybe a, as it says here, mighty man. Okay. And this is uh, the word. Ayil, Ayil. Last few words that it says is lentil, oak, post, ram, and tree. Ayil. Okay. So let's back back up to our original words here. We've looked at that root word, that root word. We've got one more. And it's talking about a place in Palestine at Bethuel. Compare this word, H1329. Uh, H and again, it's pointing out Bethel, a place in Palestine. Okay. So now we have a better understanding when we look at that word to understand what it means, right? Okay. So let's uh, let's see here. So we've got and Bethel begot Rebecca. Okay, we know that. We've got we know that Bethel came from Nahor and Mil Milcah, M-I-L-C-A-H, right? I think that's what we got here. So now let's look and see who begot Nahor and Milchah, or whatever you want to pronounce her name, okay? Uh, let's do a let's see we go with the male line on this one or the female line on this one um, we went female last time let's go female again Mil Milcha M-I-L-C-A-H M-I-L we'll run that real quick we get 358 mentions and that's associated with the word family as you can see family and milk the word mill is part of the word milk 
and family, which you can see they are they, how they would be related. And then Milka, and it's even a C after the L, like milk. Milka. Okay. All right. And it says 30 milk camels. And yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and complete her name a little better. Uh, put a C on there. Let's hit that again. We're at 358 verses. Brings it down to 16 verses. Okay. So now we should be able to see. Here we go. Daughter of Haran. Let's read this verse. And Abraham and Nahor. Nahor took them wives. The name of Abraham's wife was Sarah. And the name of Nahor's wife, Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Iscah. Okay. Okay, so we got a few new players here now, don't we? We got Sari. Which I believe we're going to find some interesting things out by looking at Sari. Okay. And of course we have Milka, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milka. So Haran is Milka's father. And the father of Izka. And then the next one down below, let's see what it says. And it came to pass after these things that it was told Abraham, saying, Behold, Milcah, she is also born. Okay, we read that earlier. Okay, so let's look now. So we got Milcah was the father, but who was, I'm a little confused here. Let's read this again. And Abram and Nahor took... Abram and Nahor took them wives. The name of Abram's wife, which later becomes Abraham in the Bible, I believe. Yeah. Uh, so his name changes also and puts a takes away the M and puts the word Ham in it. Or either maybe leaves the M and puts the word Ha in it, as you can see right there where my mouse is at. Okay, so let's make sure we know what we're looking at. So Abram and Nahor took wives. Abram's wife was Sarai. Sarai, or Sarai, we'll just call her Sarah. And the name of Nahor's wife, Milcah. Okay. The daughter of Haran. But where is the mother? Who is the mother? Why am I not understanding this here? Who is the mother of Milka? So since we don't see who Milka's wife is or Milka's mother is, let's let's go ahead and click on this. It brings that up. I'll highlight it. And let's see, it may say right in here somewhere somehow, but just not pulled up in the same verse as her name. It should be here. So let's go up and see if we see anything here. Let's just read. Let's read right here. And Nahor lived nine and twenty years and begot Terah. And Nahor lived after after he begot Terah and 119 years and begot sons and daughters. And Terah lived 70 years and begot Abram, Nahor, and Haran. So Terah begot these three men, males. Now the generations are of Terah. Terah begot Abram. Nahor and Haran, and Haran begot Lot, 
and Haran died before his father, Terah, in the land of his nativity, and or nativity in Ur of the Chaldees. And Abram and Nahor took wives. Well, looks like we're going to have to just follow, and I'll hunt it down another time. But we're going to have to look at Sarah here a little bit more. And I can see an interesting verse right below this, this one here. But Sari was barren. She had no child. Really? Okay. Let's run a search for the Sari and see what we see. Obviously, we could just keep reading. Well, let's read this last two verses here, and then we'll run a search for Sari. And Terah took Abram his son, and, and Lot the son of Haran, his son's son, and Sarah his daughter-in-law, his son Abraham's wife, Sarah his daughter-in-law, his, his son Abraham's wife, and they went forth with them from Ur of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan. So they're going to go into the land of the giants. And they came unto Haran and dwelt there. And the days of Terah were two hundred and five years. And Terah died in Haran. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and run this search for Sari. S-A-R-A-I. S A R A I. But before we put the A I on there, let's just start with S A R. 186 verses. S A R. You know, you know, there's where she was barren. There's that verse we just read. Okay, talking about going to the land of Canaan. Then it says Genesis twelve eleven, and it came to pass when he w when he was come near to enter into Egypt, that he said unto Sarah, "Okay, this is where we need to go." Because you can see what's coming up next down here. If you want to pause it and read it, but we're fixing to read it. So Genesis twelve eleven. All right. Okay. So, obviously, this is a little further down. And God, or it says here, the Lord had said to Abraham, Get, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make th make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed, as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abram took Sari, his wife, and Lot, his brother, brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan. And into the land of Canaan they came. And Abram passed through the land unto the place called Sichem, unto the plain of Moray, and the Canaanite was then in the land. Again, the Canaanite is a word, word for giants. Okay, so let's highlight that as well. And what I will do for those of you that are, haven't seen me do it before or do this specific word, is let's do the Strong's definition. So we got six here, and here's, and the Canaanite. 
that's H3669. And the pronunciation is Kena Kenayani. Kenayani. We call it Canaanite, but they're calling it Kiani. It's the pronunciation Kiani. But I'm gonna call it Canaanite. Canaanite or Canaanite. Okay, it says a Canaanite, which is a different spelling of this word. Okay, which this is probably the word for it right here. Or inhabitant of Kenan, by implication a peddler. The Canaanites standing for their standing for their neighbors, the Ishmael Ishmaelites, who conducted mercantile caravans, Canaanite merchant trafficker. However, I do know that the land of Canaanites had giants in it. Now let's go ahead and click on this and look at this root word or base word. The base word for Canaan is the is humiliated. So they were called Canaanites because they were humiliated merchants, maybe. It says Canaan, a son of Ham. Also the country inhabited by him. So was Ham humiliated somehow? Inhabited by him, Canaan, merchant, traffic. Okay. We'll go and click on the base word of that says to to bend the knee hence to humiliate vanquish bring down low into subjection under humble you'd kind of like to make someone your servant right okay so we did that we looked at canaanite right so let's keep uh let's keep going here and the lord appeared unto abram and said Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. And he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west and Hiah on the east. And there he builded an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed going on still towards the south. And there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down into Egypt to subjourn there, for the famine was grievous in the land. And it came to pass, when he was come near to enter Egypt, that he said unto Sarai, or Sarai, Sarah, whatever, his wife, Behold now, I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. Okay? She was good looking, apparently, right? Therefore it shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall, shall see thee, that they shall say, This is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will save thee alive. Say, I pray thee, Thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake, and my soul shall live because of thee. So he's heading into Egypt now. The land with the pyramids, the giant structures that were built, that still sit to this day, with blocks the size that not even a machine on us on our current world has the ability to move but something moved them but how would something move them they would have to have special powers uh, gifts from their god you might say to do this type of magic which would be magic to move such large blocks right but let's keep reading And it came to pass that when Abram was come into Egypt, that Egyptians beheld the woman that she was very fair. The princes also of Pharaoh saw her and commended her before Pharaoh, and the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. Okay. And he entreated Abram well for her sake. And he had sheep 
and oxen and he asses and men servants and maid servants and she asses and camels. So Abram goes into the land of the pharaohs. And if you look at all the depictions of pharaohs that are carved in stone, they were men of renown, giants. They were very large, based on all my research. And they had conical heads and hats. And everybody emulated them by using similar styles of hairstyles and hats and even the women Egyptian women would bind their heads to try to make them conical because they were emulating their gods and in this case the god was Pharaoh he believed that he was a god so let's keep reading so he rewarded Abraham for bringing such a fair woman into his kingdom the Pharaoh did. He gave him sheep and oxes and asses and men servants and maid servants and worked out pretty well for Abram. However, let's keep reading. And the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sari, Abram's wife. And Pharaoh called Abram and said, what is this that thou hast done unto me? It's a very interesting statement, don't you think? What is this that thou hast done unto me? Why didst thou not tell me that she was thy wife? Why dost sayest why sayest thou she is my sister? So I might have taken her to me to wife. Now therefore, behold thy wife, take her and go thy way. So what do you reckon happened exactly? They took this beautiful woman out of, just walked in out of the wilderness, and she was beautiful enough that the princes of the Pharaoh took her to the Pharaoh and said, hey, look at what we found for you. And they were there long enough that it wasn't a quick visit because he got oxen and asses and men servants and maid servants and camels and and so they've been there a while. I would suspect that the Pharaoh liked to inspect very closely any possible wife he would my maybe take, right? And he even said that why didst thou not tell me that she was thy wife? Why saidest thou she is my sister, so I might have taken her to be to me to wife? And told him to leave. What do you reckon happened? What could have happened while she was there with the magical people? The Pharaoh, the one with powers given from the stars, you might say. The Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him, and they sent him away, and his wife, and all that he had. Right? Okay, now let's, let's keep reading. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll keep reading, but let's, let's go back to looking at uh, Sari, right? Because we want to see who she begot. But it said earlier that she was barren, right? So let's look it up again, though. S-A-R. Okay. See, like here, it says, but Sari was barren. She had no child. Maybe it's going to stay that way. But let's uh, let's see what we can see here, because um, I don't know. I don't know. I've never sp spent an enormous amount of time on Old Testament, but I am now because of where I've been led at over the last 
well, ultimately 12 years now that I've been doing this on YouTube. Uh, okay, they gathered all their stuff and they went. And they said, uh, Sarah's wife. And, yep, we looked at all that. And I think we're going to have to narrow it a little bit more. Let's add an A on here. Or maybe just go ahead and put the AI. Okay, let's come back down. And, okay. Okay, let's see what it says right here. It says, right after where the Lord plagued the Pharaoh, it says, now Sarah, Abraham's wife, bear him no children and she had a had an handmaid an Egyptian whose name was Hagar a handmaid let's take a look at what a handmaid means right and then we'll come back to Sari okay handmaid Okay, let's go ahead and click on that and click on the Strong's definitions and look at what a handmaid is. And she had a handmaid. It says, shift call, shift call, shift call, call. Okay. Uh, it says, a feminine from an unused root meaning to spread out as a family. A female slave as a member of the household. Bond hand, maiden, servant, wench. Bond woman, bond woman, servant. Okay. A female that you've made part of your family that's kind of a servant because she is not of bloodline. Okay, let's go ahead and click on that. Let's click on this root word as it says uh, to spread out as a family. See this? And it says uh, families, circle of relatives, figuratively a class of persons, a species of animals or sort of things. By extension, a tribe or people. Wait a minute. This is sounding kind of interesting, isn't it? It says, Mish Paul Call is the pronunciation. Mish Paul Call. So who was, who was this maidservant and exactly what is she? Is she just a normal human? I don't know. I actually do not know the, the answer yet. I find it interesting they, they're saying, it's saying uh, things that lead me to think of some kind of a mixed nature. Let's click on these other two base words. Shawfall, uh, a primitive root to a braid, bear, high, stick out. Okay. Let's click on that again and let's look at that root word and check this other root word. Feminine unused root meaning to spread out as a family, female slave. As a member of the household bondage learners, okay, same thing. Let's click on that base word. And I think this is the one we haven't clicked on yet. Uh, to spread out as a family, female, slave, household, uh, bonds, men, bonds, woman, woman, servant. And click on that base word, and it brings us right back here again. So a tribe or type of people or family or kindred mish paul call very interesting okay so now we understand that a little bit better it's a a slave of a female type that lives with you right that lives with a family or in this case a people back in the day okay now let's go back to what we were just at and bring back up uh, let's go ahead and put the A and the I on there. 
which I think her name changes too, which we'll see. Well, let's see what it says here, back where we were. We got to go down. Okay, here we go. Somewhere's right in here. Sorry, guys. This is how, you, how it works when you record it live. Uh, behold, the Lord has restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go into, go in unto my maid. And it may be that I may ordain children by her. And Abram, Abram hearkened to the voice of Sari. Oh boy. Boy, they had all kinds of wicked things going on back then. At least it would be considered wicked. Well, what do you say? Uh, okay. That is crazy. Okay. Let's see here. The name of the handmaid. I mean, it's now Siri Abrams, while I bear him no children, she had a handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. Okay, let's look at Hagar. Okay. Let's look at the Strong's definition of Hagar. It says, Hagar. Hagar is the pronunciation. Hagar. Of uncertain, perhaps foreign. Derivation, Hagar, the mother of Ishmael, Hagar, mother of Ishmael. Well, probably tells us what's next, right? Okay, so let's go back, remove that, and let's read this, I think. And Sari, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her handmaid, the Egyptian. Oh, gosh. And she was an Egyptian. She was given to them by the Pharaoh. So she would have been Egyptian. So then we don't know exactly the bloodline, which is what we're chasing. And this is getting interesting. Oh, boy. Let's see. Uh... uh her handmaid, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife. And he went unto Hagar, so he had, uh, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her, mist her mistress was despised in her eyes. So Sarah told Abram to take her as a wife. And then she conceived and and he went and he went unto Hagar and when she conceived and when she saw that she had conceived her mistress was despised in her eyes. We'll come back and I'm going to define mistress. Obviously, we know what it means to us, but we need a better understanding of that word. I'm going to read the next verse here. And Sari said unto Abram, My wrong be upon thee. I have given my maid into thy blossom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judge between me and thee. Oh, I got to read some more. But Abram said unto Sarai, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand. Do to her as it pleaseth, pleaseth thee. And when Sarai dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. And the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness. So would have found uh, the Egyptian uh wife right and the angel of the lord found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness by the fountain in the way of sure and he said 
Hagar, Sarah's maid, whence camest thou, and whither wilt whither wilt thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress, Sari. Oh, see how the difference in the, what mistress probably means? See it there? She's fleeing from the face of her of my mistress, Sari. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress, and submit thyself under her hands. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shalt bear a son, and shalt call his name Ishmael. Yep, just as we read earlier. Because the Lord hath heard thy affliction, and he will be... Oh, wow. Wow. And he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Wow. Now I've done forgot the word above that I want. Oh, it was mistress, but we figured that out by reading. Yeah, what it, what it kind of means. We might look at it closer if we need to. Let's read that again. And he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man. And every man's hand against him. And he should dwell in the presence of all his brethren. And she called the name of the Lord that spake unto her, Thou God seest me. For she said, Have I also here looked after him that seeth me? Let's read that again. And she called the name of the Lord that spake unto her, Thou God seest me. For she said, Have I also here looked after him that seeth me? Hmm. Let's keep reading. Wherefore the well was called Berlaherio, Ber Berlah her oh I behold it is between Kadesh and Bered and Hagar bare Abram a son and Abram called his son's name which Hagar bare Ishmael and Abram was fourscore and six years old when Hagar bare Ishmael to Abram. Wow. Okay, so we have we have our wild man coming from the Egyptian woman. We have our wild man coming from the Pharaoh. The Pharaoh's people coming through the woman. The handmaid. The Slave, female, Egyptian. Wow. Okay, let's see. What should we do next? Okay, so let's go ahead. Obviously, we're going to follow Ishmael. But let's look one more time at Sari. Because... There's some things going on here that I think we need to look at to understand the bigger picture. Okay, let's see down here. Okay, we've read there. We've read, behold, as dealt with, please, so deal with Sarah. And, uh... Hagar, Sarah's maid, whence thou came. We read that, and God said unto her, for Seth. So this is the last mention. Oh, because her name changes right here. And God said unto Abraham, as for Sarai, thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. And I do remember some of 
this because this is also where Abraham's name changed and the circumcision covenant was made, it says, with Abraham's God. And, uh, yeah, that's what it's talking about right here. Is that when, when Abram was 90 years old and nine, so 99, the Lord appeared to him. And he wanted to make a covenant about, and that he would multiply his seed exceedingly. That his covenant was with him and everyone that followed him would be circumcised or they would break the covenant. And his name was also changed from Abram right here to Abraham for a father of many nations. Have I made thee? Are you familiar with the agreement kind of like they they said put together by Trump, which is the Abraham Accords? Remember that? That was signed in I think August of twenty eighteen. I think or twenty nineteen. Might have been twenty nineteen. Um before Trump left office last time. The Abraham Accords, the agreement for a week, meaning seven years. Okay. All right. So this is, that's the last mention that with that spelling. So we changed it from a I to an H. Right here. Sarah shall be. Sarah shall be her, shall her name be. Okay. And it also says down here that the Lord was also going to uh, allow Sarah to have a child, it said here. Let's see. It says, and I will bless her and bring thee a son also of her. Ye, I will bless her, and she shall, shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be to her. Kings of people, of nations. Okay. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah, that is ninety years old, bear? And Abraham said unto God, O oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And Abraham said unto God, O oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. Ishmael, the son from the Egyptian woman. And God said, Sarah, Thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. Oh! Oh, Lord and Lordy. I knew that's what it was going to be, but I wasn't positive because I never spent that much time studying the Old Testament. Holy moly. So, Isaac. Oh, my gosh. So. So, Isaac of course, is the father of Esau. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Oh, boy. Okay, let's read a little bit more. I'm going to read that again. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant. This is why the birthright thing means so much, right? And with his seed after him. And for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget. And I will make him a great nation with twelve princes.
but my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. And he left off talking with him, and God went up from Abraham. And Abraham took Ishmael his son, and all that were born in his house, and all that were brought with, bought with his money, every male among the men of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the same self same day, as God had said unto him. Boy. Imagine when he went to all the men and said, we've got to do this. You know, that had to be real popular. Anyways, <laughs> and Abraham was 90 years old and nine, and he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. Now, just curious, I want to do a Strong's definition of foreskin and the name of it is pronounced or law foreskin is called or law okay feminine for another root word the prepus foreskin phrase uncircumcised let's click on that and look the root, root word properly exposed projecting loose as to the prepus used only technically uncircumcised still having the prepus uncortailed uncircumcised person all raw so this is the word for not being circumcised I guess still having the prepus un uncortailed so, in other words, the, in a way, the way I'm seeing it, kind of like the veil is not being, it has not been removed. Wow. The veil, and the reason why I say the veil is because of, if you, if you consider carefully without perversion, if you consider carefully the penis and the shape of the penis, as well, specifically the the uh, top of the penis <laughs> it is in the image of a toroidal field like a mushroom yeah like a mushroom very much like a mushroom right even people make jokes about that kind of stuff but uh, there's importance into understanding that the female body as well has the toroidal the images, the image of of God, the image of heaven, right on their bodies and in our bodies. And why, you know, I don't quite understand, but maybe I will learn along with you, why the removing of the veil because it's virtually what a foreskin is, is a, it veils the mushroom tip. Okay? <laughs> I know I'm probably, some of you are probably laughing at me. It veils, it's a veil. It's similar to a woman's, uh, what's it called, Volga? A woman's, a woman's, uh, reproductive organ or vagina has um, veils also just like uh, just like the holy of holies in the temple had veils in front of it and of course there are many including Egyptian and other societies like the Freemasons they wear a veil in front of their private areas a two flap veil a minor a minor wing or a minor flap and a larger flap and the freemasons wear that up in front of their male member 
Yes. Okay, with all that said, let's let us go back over here and now understand a little bit better what that means about the foreskin. Not that it explains it here, but I've explained it to you because what I'm telling you is true. It has to do with the veiling, the veiling, the removal of the veil. And even in some cultures in the past, they would remove the woman's veil along with her uh, clitoris. Again, the word Taurus in that, just like the U Taurus, where creation happens. It's a point of creation that is behind the veil. The veils are the female's vulva, and for the male, it's his foreskin. But in this case, Abraham's God told him to remove his veil from his manhood. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. All right, so now let's think, where do we need to look next? Okay, let's look back over at Sarah, spelled with the H on the N instead of the I. So when this covenant was made, the the H was added to Sarah. And with Abraham, it was Abram and a a h or a an a m was added or wait a minute hold on it was abram and then an h a was added the h a that made the ha ha part and with sarah he added an h also so it went from Sari to Sarah with the H. So it changed their names and added H-A, the ham. Okay, so let's look at Abraham's name. Abraham. Let's keep the H in mind, the H-A right here. The Abra. Uh, Abraham, 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 Abraham. So let's look at the home part. We should be able to do that by looking at the base words, possibly. Or either I can run a search just for H A W or H A and see what the definitions come back as and other re re relevant words that are, that are uh, similar to it or base words for it. Now this series says Abraham, it says uh, probably meaning to be populous. Ha. Does that have anything to do with populous? Father of a multitude. Abraham, the latter name of Abram. Abraham. Let's look at the root word. Meaning father. Primitive word father in a literal or intermediate or figurative or remote application chief for kind of reminds me of four skin chief for father less idiom patrimony principle pat, patrimony principle compare names in abi compare, com, compare names in abi abi and this base word is A W B or A B, the B A. Ba, Abraham, Abraham, H A. But this is A B, H A. I'm trying to f associate why the H was added to Abraham, or an H A to Abraham and an H to Sarah, which already had an A, so it was H. -A. A, a H A and A H was added, and I think it has. I'm guessing something to do with genetics, but 
you know, how I'm guessing works. You never know. Okay, so let's go back and let's pull up Sarah one more time, at least. And we had 33 verses. And uh, we're, let's see where we're at here. Okay, right in here. Okay, and the, and the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh? Okay, we, we read that. Is, is anything too hard for the Lord at the time appointed? I will return unto thee according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. Then, and this is a totally different, well, it's actually next verse. Then Sarah denied laughing, or denied saying, I laughed not, for she was afraid, and he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. Okay. And a couple, two chapters later, and Abraham said of Sarah, his wife, she is my sister. And, and Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. And then Abimelech took sheep and oxen and manservants and womb servants and gave them unto Abraham. And restored him Sarah, his wife. Okay. I'm thinking we need... Because we know over here, we know that... Let's turn off the Strongs. We know over here that Ishmael was his son... And Ishmael, let's go ahead and pull up Ishmael, I-S-H, wait a minute, no, 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 the son's name was, was going to be Isaac, right, yeah, yeah, Isaac, so Ishmael was the son from the, yeah, here we go, right here, Ishmael was the son let me make that one green. The son from the Egyptian female. And Ish, uh, and Isaac came from Sarah. And we know Isaac then had Enoch and Jacob as their first children. And he came out a hairy man. A mighty man, a man of renown, that became a a man of a people, hairy people. Wow. Did y'all guys ex Did y'all guys expect this? Maybe you can say in the comments, and I'll be watching uh, the comments. You know, I'm recording it now, but I'll be watching this later because this is going to be a premiere. It's not technically live, even though the comments are live. So, I know some of you already maybe knew this, okay? But for this understanding that we had multiple nations, at least one of which that were hairy men. And, of course, I'm going to have to follow these guys, Ishmael. And we followed uh, Esau quite a bit. And, of course, we know of Jacob and in in Jacob of Israel. But I'm wanting to follow the giants and the hairy men and that kind of thing. So that's what we're going to do. In our next video, what I'm going to do, guys, something a little bit different is I'm going to leave about 15 minutes on the end of this recording. And there there won't be any audio where I'll put some low music. And what this will do is this will give an additional 15 minutes on the end of this video where y'all guys can chat in the chat. 
And hopefully this works. I mean, I know it'll work, but will y'all guys, will it effectively mess something up? I don't know. But anyways, I'm going to take this video and I'm going to add 15 minutes of time on the very end after I'm done talking here so that y'all guys can chat more in the chat and maybe share some thoughts about what we've learned here. And, of course, the story goes on. The story shall continue, right? And we're going to dig follow it further into it, but we found some very interesting things. And I do see all y'all guys' comments. I've seen where you're talking about Nimrod and all these things from Egypt, and I know that's part of the story, but we have to follow the entire story in order to really... Um, uh, know that we know it. Not just me, not just you, but everybody that's here needs to know what happened and how this happened and why that we still have to this day hairy giants, hairy giant men that speak a language and live in the forests, but they have capabilities that are outside of the realm of what we are aware that we have as capabilities, as what we consider to be normal humans. But it is proven without a doubt in my mind that these beings exist. One, because I've heard them in the woods beating on the ground every night at 3 a.m. I heard it, if I heard it once, I heard it 200 times, 200 nights, literally. I used to sit outside at night and listen to them beating the ground with giant sticks or boulders or something. And then one night I heard them howl, which is completely amazing that if you run a search for the word howl in the Bible and if you watched the previous videos to this you know we looked at that that it's said that there will come a day when these men in the woods are going to come out of the woods and they will be able to see and determine who is evil and that they will destroy the evil men and women and their children the rich men with their gold and silver won't be able to buy their way out of it and that they would destroy them in their homes and then dance in their homes. And it talked about giant hairy men doing it along with some things that would be called a jackal or a dog man or wolf man. And there's a lot of rumors about them being real out there in the woods too. But I've never, that I'm aware of, experienced anything with one of those beings. And I don't really want to. So, I know you probably have a lot of questions. And I do too. And we're going to continue. But I need you to understand something. Is that in my, this is a little personal information. In the many months leading up to this point. These times have been extremely psychologically, spiritually warfare active for me personally. I'll just say it like this, that the people around me are being spiritually motivated to attack me and accuse me of heinous things most of which seem to have something to do with sex for some reason and and women for some reason and there's absolutely no base to it and I don't understand there's no truth to it so but yet it continues it's like an like the accuser accusing night and day that's the kind of thing I've been having to deal with and it's been really hard in a but I don't believe it is actually the person. I think it is something happening, or the persons. I think it's more like something happening spiritually, supernaturally, 
because these people will be fine and they understand the truth and then it's like something comes over them and then they experience this accuser thing and they come after me and and then normally with prayer or some rebuking in the name of Christ Jesus Christ it normally will subside again but just know that I'm dealing with great challenges it is great effort for me to even be able to do my work which I still continue every day even though I don't put out videos as much as I would like to because I'm under spiritual attacks the, these truths that I'm sharing with y'all guys are things that they the the spiritual world does not want y'all guys to know what I'm showing you here in these videos and they're freaking out about it and spiritually attacking all every single person around me family and friends they're being spiritually attacked and uh I asked that y'all guys pray for them pray for the the spirits to be removed out of their lives and out of my life that are attacking because it's just about um, been more that I can bear but I am going to bear it you know why because my God is on my side and he is for me and he is for the truth and if he is for me which I know he is then no one can stand for me to stop me in my work and what I'm doing and what I'm going to continue to do. Nothing will stop me short of God himself calling me home. And may that be when that is, be his will. And I'm fine with it. But I still have a lot of things I want to learn and understand and present to y'all guys. So hang in there with me. And when you get and can from time to time please take a moment and gather with your finger over on your table where you have your dinner gather with your little fingers of some crumbs from the edge of your table and take those crumbs and send me those send me those bread crumbs because I too have to eat and survive and it's particularly daunting right now but we will make it through it because God is on our side and he wants this truth to be told. And if our father is for us, no one will stand in our way and stop us. Yes, there may be battles. Yes, there may be scars. But I will, no matter what, continue to walk forward and learn the truth and share it with y'all guys. All right. Uh, let's see if we can add that 15 minutes now, okay? All right, I love you guys. I probably won't be saying anything else live in the video from here on out. It'll be just uh, maybe some light music or silence for 15 more minutes and may or may not be any images at all on the screen. But y'all guys can chat in the chat for another 15 minutes. And I'll indicate in there approximately how much time is left when it starts getting close to 15. So y'all guys can say your temporary farewells, right? All right. Well, that's it for this time, guys. Here goes 15 minutes of us chatting in the chat. I love you. Our Father loves you. You know how I know? Because I know he loves me. And if he could love me, oh, if he could only, if he could love me, he could love anyone. Because I have done foul things in my life that I'm not proud of. And, uh, you know, I once was lost. But due to my sin,
I've got one that can see. Logic before authority.